Yo guys, what's going on? Matt here, and welcome back to another division preview for the 2015-16 NHL season. This is the Central Division. We're going over all seven teams. And honestly, guys, when I was going through this and making all these slides and trying to figure out where I thought each team would end up at the end of next season, it was extremely tough. Five of these seven teams made the playoffs last year. Two of them made the wild card. And honestly, Dallas Stars and the Colorado Avalanche were not too far off, especially the Stars. So um, this year, uh, most of them got better. And I honestly had a very tough time looking at this division. So before I start, these again are just my opinions, not yours. Obviously, you can put yours in the comment section below. I definitely encourage that. Um, but yeah, honestly, this could go two or three different ways. Um, from where I put it. So without further ado, here we go with the 2015 to 16 Central Division preview. All right, starting off, we have your Stanley Cup champions, the Chicago Blackhawks. These guys finished on the top Stanley Cup winners against the Lightning in the Stanley Cup final, and they did it uh, in dramatic fashion. They won it in a close game, and they can't really do much better next season because, like I said, they finished on top. In the regular season, though, they did finish. Uh, they finished third in the Central Division. And honestly, they just wanted to get into the playoffs and then do their thing there. And that's exactly what they did. Their MVP of the season and of the playoffs, in my opinion, is Duncan Keith uh, or was Duncan Keith. He is a very impactful player for them. He's a leader. He doesn't necessarily need to put up points because he's a defenseman, but he really did help them a lot and led them to their Stanley Cup championships. So what do they need to do in the offseason? Well, they need to shed some cap space because they're under that limit, and if they don't want to have a penalty, then they're going to need to get under it, and that is exactly what they had to do. First off, Brandon Saad. He goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets. In return, they get Artem Anisimov and Mark Deneau. Two very good play or players. I Especially, I think uh, Artem Anisimov can be a top six forward for them. He's definitely an impact player. Maybe not as much of an impact player as Saad was, but good return for him. Also, Deneau maybe can get a couple of games in... Um, or I guess a little more than a couple of games on their first line, maybe if he comes into the NHL on their roster. And they also did get Trevor Daly for their defense. They did lose Johnny Oduya, and Trevor Daly could probably plug up that spot. But um, definitely for them, um, depending on what happens with Kane and his whole offseason thing, with this whole thing happening, it should still be a pretty good team. They have Kane, Taves, um, their whole defensive core there. And honestly, with Hosa, even though he's getting older, he's still not getting worse. So he's going to be there. The Chicago Blackhawks, I have them finishing still at third in the Central Division because they did get a little worse, but they still have a very good team, and they can certainly make the playoffs as a top three team in the Central Division. And that is how I see the Chicago Blackhawks at the end of this next season. Okay, next up we have the Colorado Avalanche. Now, just like the Calgary Flames this past season, in 2013 for the Avalanche, they did very well. They made the playoffs with a lot of young players, and a lot of people didn't expect that. Um, and then coming into last year, a lot of people expected them to continue that and finish in the top three, and they didn't do that at all. They finished in the last spot in the Central Division. They had the 10th overall draft pick, I believe, and honestly, it was a very weird season for Colorado. Some injuries to their starting netminder, Semyon Varlamov, and it was just kind of a weird season for them. And... What do they do in the offseason? Well, they go ahead and get Carl Soderberg and Francois Beauchemin. And these were some decent moves, especially Beauchemin, because it does help out their defense because their defense was struggling. MVP, I said, was Gabriel Landeskog last year. He did uh, lead their team in points, or I think he was tied with a Gimler or something like that. And as a captain, you need your captain, unless he's a defenseman really, to score a lot of points and lead your team. And he did that. But they need to build some uh, around him. I thought maybe they'd add a couple more forwards. They did draft Rantanen, but um, they just went with Carl Soderberg from the Bruins. And that's kind of an interesting um, play there. Duchesne had an okay year. McKinnon definitely had a down year from his rookie year. So really, next year, I'm really curious to see how they do. I have them finishing sixth. Maybe they'll do better, but really right now, they're kind of that bubble team that I think is not going to find their way in the playoffs at the end of the season. And... They're going to need some more depth, especially defensively. Like I said, they did sign Boschman, but they're going to need a little bit more than that if they're going to want to compete because Varlamov faced a lot of shots, and you can only do so well. Varlamov is a goal good goaltender, but really any goaltender with that amount of shots against you is going to crack at some point, and that's exactly what he did. He didn't play too well, and as a result, the Avalanche lost a good amount of games. They did get uh, 90 points at the end of the season, so that's decent, uh, but... 
in the Central Division, it was very good last year. That didn't cut it. So unfortunately for the Avalanche, I don't see them finishing in the playoffs um, at the end of the season. I think they're going to go around sixth, maybe fifth if they do well. Um, but that is how the Colorado Avalanche lie, in my opinion, at the end of the season. Next up, we have the Dallas Stars. Now, the Dallas Stars last season um, were led pretty much by Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Sagan was injured a little bit, and they finished sixth in the Central Division just ahead of the Colorado Avalanche. Now, the Stars, honestly, I can't figure them out. Last season, um, they did good. They were still playing some meaningful games in March. They came close, closer than the Avalanche, and... They looked pretty decent, but uh, they didn't make the playoffs. You just got to wonder what they got to do. Carl Lettinen didn't have the best year last year. Um, so what do they do? They go out and add Patrick Sharp and Johnny Oduya. If you're going to add some players, you might as well add them from the best team, the Chicago Blackhawks. They get those two, and honestly, I think that's just what they needed. They have a very good impact defenseman in Johnny Oduya, and they also have Patrick Sharp, who is a really great player. He just wasn't too much in the spotlight because he was on the Blackhawks with Kane, Taves, Keith, and all those guys. So... This is his time to shine. Some people thought maybe he'd go to Florida, but he comes to Dallas, and I think that's the perfect fit. Um, I don't know if he's going to be playing with Ben and Sagan and all that, but honestly, it's just adding more skill to this Dallas Stars team. That's what they need, and they also, like I said, added Johnny Oduya. He will help defensively, and I guess Antti Niemi comes in. I don't know if he's going to be your number one goaltender or number two. I expect him and Kari Lennon to um, switch off and kind of split the time in net for the Stars. They have to figure that out. But I think that they're going to make a pretty big jump this year. I don't think they're going to finish in the top three, but I think that they could finish in a wild card spot, depending on how good the Pacific Division is, how bad the Central Division is. I have them at fourth in the Central Division, so that doesn't necessarily get them a playoff spot, but it gets them um, at least close to the wild card spot, if not in it. So I think the Stars finally make that jump this season. I know they made the playoffs the season before, but then this season. They didn't do as well, and they added Sharp and Oduya. So I think they are a better team, even than they were before when they made the playoffs against the Ducks a couple years ago. So I have them finishing fourth, possibly in a wild card spot. And if you're a Dallas Stars fan with Patrick Sharp and Johnny Oduya, this next season is going to be exciting. Next up, we have the Minnesota Wild. And last year, they did pretty decent. Uh, they finished in the wild card spot for the second year in a row. And also, for like the fourth year in a row, they faced the Chicago Blackhawks and they were knocked out in the second round this year. And it's pretty tough. They knocked out the Blues in the first round, but they just seem to face the Blackhawks every year, which they have been for, I think, the last four years, like I said. And I honestly don't know what to think of this team. This is a very good team, and they didn't do too much in the offseason. Their MVP of last season was Devin Dubnik. Without him, I don't think they were going to make the playoffs. They were pretty much as low as a team can get. They had their coach yelling at them in practice. They were on a, like a seven-game losing streak, something like that, and they were awful. Devin Dubnik comes in literally single-handedly saves their season. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Devin Dubnik. Honestly, I thought he was getting kind of lucky. They re-sign him, and they seem to have some faith in him. So if he can come back and do the same thing that he did last year for the Wild, I think they make a really big jump, as you see my by my uh, projected finish. Off-season additions, I didn't have any for them. Um, they really didn't do anything, but honestly, they don't need to. They made the playoffs, and I think they're going to really make the big jump. I have them finishing first in the Central Division next year, and if Dubnik can play a full season like he did last season, then he could play very well and lead them to the top spot in the Central Division. If he doesn't, well, it's going to be a tough year for them because if they don't have a good goaltender, you know, they almost missed the playoffs last year until Dubnik came in. So this year, if Dubnik plays very well, which I think he could, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but if he continues to play well with a pretty good defense in front of him, unlike he had in Arizona and Edmonton, then he could really, really help his team and get them to that top spot in the Central. So if you're a Wild fan, exciting times coming. They didn't do much in the offseason, but really they didn't need to. They just needed to re-sign that man, Devik Dubnik. And I think that they are going to be one of the top teams to beat in the Western Conference. Okay, next on the list, we have the Nashville Predators. And they were definitely a surprising team last year. Not a lot of people had them finishing in the playoffs. They actually finished second in the Central Division. Uh, they did lose in the first round to the Chicago Blackhawks, but it's the Chicago Blackhawks. They are very overpowered, and it really isn't fair sometimes, but now that they have um, less good players, then I guess maybe it's a little more fair, but you never know. Anyways, this is about Nashville, and they really surprised a lot of people last year. They had new coach Peter Laviolette, who was the former Philadelphia Flyers coach, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do next year. Their MVP last year was definitely 
Philip Forsberg, and this is why. He's a rookie sensation. He came out uh, 2012 draft, really kind of under the radar. He came out, and I remember, though, in the 2012 draft, I was like kind of hoping my team, the Sharks, would pick him up, but he was gone by then. So the Capitals, they do a bad trade for Erat. He ends up with Nashville. He comes up, and he plays amazing. He really did, and that was kind of a big reason why they did well, And honestly. Um, I don't know how he's going to do next year. I don't know if he's going to have a sophomore slump, but... Um, I don't think the Nashville Predators are going to do that good next year. I really think uh, last year was just a, I don't want to say a fluke, but it was kind of lucky. I don't know. I, I really don't know. This, like I said at the beginning, this division can go like three different ways. Offseason additions, they just added Barrett Jackman, who's a, a pretty good shutdown physical defenseman that they can plug in to their defensive rotation. But yeah, I had them finishing at fifth. They could also finish fourth um, with another team, but... Um, it's going to be interesting. It really is. I had the Stars finishing in fourth. It could flip-flop. The Stars can move up. I don't even know. But I don't think the Nashville Predators are going to get into the top three in the Central Division because the Wild are getting better. You got the Blues. You got the Blackhawks. All those teams. And you even got the Stars up and coming. They could possibly make the Wild Card spot. Because remember, being the fifth in the division doesn't necessarily mean you don't make the playoffs. Because last year, the Winnipeg Jets were fifth in the Central and they made the Wild Card spot. So it is possible for the Predators to make the playoffs. But this year, I see them taking a step back just because, I don't know. Pecorino played well, but I feel like this team was kind of like Colorado. Not in the sense that they were super young, but in the sense that maybe they just kind of got a glimpse of the future a little bit too early. And I think this year, they don't make the playoffs. They're a bubble team, but I feel like they won't make the playoffs and will not um, be able to contend for the Cup next season. Next up, we have the St. Louis Blues. Now, this is one of the weirdest teams in the National Hockey League. Um, for the past couple years as a Sharks fan, I'll admit, my Sharks have been probably one of the biggest chokers in the league. Also, maybe the Washington Capitals on the eastern side of things. But lately, it's been the Blues. It really has. They finished first in the Central Division, and they lose in the first round to the Minnesota Wild. They just have not had a lot of success the last couple of years. And I know a couple years they played the Blackhawks, and they lost. This year, they faced the Wild. They lost. Really? I, I don't know. They play so well in the regular season, and then they go to the playoffs and choke. So, MVP of last season, pretty obvious, Vladimir Tarasenko. He absolutely tore it up, and in the offseason, um, he's not an addition because he's already on the team, but they did re-sign him to a huge deal, and I think that's going to help. Um, obviously, keeping him is a big, big goal, and they did, so they keep him made a lot of good goals and he's going to be a great offensive player for them but they did trade away tj oshi they got troy brower back he's a good player but i really don't understand this i i felt like the blues definitely needed to make some changes with the recent uh, lack of success in the playoffs but i didn't think tj oshi was necessarily the answer to all that so they do get troy brower back and don't get me wrong he's a good player he really is but i just feel like he's not tj oshi like he will score some goals, but I don't know. I feel like that loss of TJ Oshie just really hurt their team and isn't really going to help them win more games. In fact, I think it's going to help them win a little less games. So they do bring in Kyle Brodziak. He's going to help a little bit for depth. But I had them finishing second in the Central Division after next season. And this is why, again, TJ Oshie not being there does hurt. They still have David Backus, but I think they're going to make the playoffs. I don't know. What's going to happen in the playoffs? Obviously, we're getting way ahead of ourselves there. Uh, we're going to have to wait till the playoff matchups come out after the end of next season. But um, I think they'll finish in the top three. Maybe Chicago will come up to number two. Maybe Dallas. I don't even know. Like I said, this division can go so many ways. I still feel like they're going to finish in the top three. I feel like they're going to take a couple of steps down, maybe finish in the high 90s with points um, or mid 90s maybe. But I feel like they took a step back a little bit. Don't know what this means in the playoffs, but I think they do get to the playoffs after next season. Okay, the last team that we are going to be going over today for the Central Division and in the Western Conference, the Winnipeg Jets. They finished fifth in the Central Division. Like I said, fifth doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing because they did get the second spot of the wild cards. They had to go against the Anaheim Ducks last year, but they did make the playoffs. They got swept, but they did make the playoffs. They had a year where they finally did well with the Atlanta Thrashers. They never did well in the first couple years in Winnipeg. They didn't do too well. Always came somewhat close, but then just fell off and never did that well. This year, um, they didn't do extremely well. They kind of squeaked in there at the last second. Um, they could have went with um, Los Angeles. They could have went with a couple different teams, maybe even Dallas. But they ended up getting the 
wild card spots. They lose to the Ducks. They get swept. But it still was a good season. The Winnipeg fans did actually get a taste of playoff action for the first time in a while. They had the whiteout. It was awesome. It really was. MVP I had is Andrew Ladd. Um, they did get Tyler Myers. He helped out. But, the end, I mean, the captain has to lead your team. And he did. He was pretty high up there in points. I think he might have actually led them in points. And... That's what you need. That's what you need, especially if you're going to want to make the playoffs like they did. Offseason additions, though, none. This is really where I was a little worried about. They did resign a couple of players, but um, they just they didn't do anything that really like blew my mind. There was nothing that really is going to help them get to that next, next step because, like I said, last year, they kind of squeaked into the playoffs, and a lot of teams around them, like the Stars and the Wild, well, Wild are already good, but the Stars more particularly, are getting better and they aren't necessarily getting any better especially not after the offseason they had didn't add anything and i had them finishing last in the central division again this could really go any way but this central division is very hard to predict um a lot of teams are getting better the stars are getting better and a lot of teams are still good like the wild the blackhawks even the blues so it's really going to be, be between them the avalanche and the predators to kind of you could swap around those three teams who knows but there's really going to be a couple of teams this year in the central division i think one or two teams that made the playoffs last year that aren't going to make it this year the jets and the predators are my picks and I just feel like they don't have enough offense. I, they, they just didn't. And the goaltending, there was a question too. I, I don't know. Pavlik just doesn't seem like a number one guy to me. They just, they put in Hutchinson. They were doing decent, but I just don't see those goaltenders leading them back to the playoffs this year. And especially since they didn't do anything in the offseason. They got Andrew Ladd, but then they had to trade away a pretty good player in a vendor Kane. So if they can get something maybe at the deadline, if they do decent, they're going to have to add a couple of things, more scoring. Uh, Matthew Pro did get injured last year, so if he can go full year and do better, um, or at least the same as he did last year, but the full year, then that will help. But I really just don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Again, it could put them at 5th, it could put them at 7th, it could put them at 6th, I don't know. But I don't see the Jets returning to the playoffs, and I know that's a huge blow if you're a Jets fan. Again, this is just my prediction, don't worry. But I just, I can't see it, and I really don't know why. I feel like they just don't have enough scoring, and their goaltending has too much of a question mark. They're definitely going to be a bubble team. But I feel like they fall on the outside looking in when the regular season comes to an end. Alright, so that is it. We did complete the Western Conference by ending with the Central Division Preview. We now have done the Pacific Division Preview and the Central Division Preview with all 14 teams. Tomorrow, we will move on to the Eastern Conference, and we will start with the Metropolitan Division. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, these are my opinions, especially with that Central Division that you guys just saw me review. There are so many ways it can go. So if you disagree, tell me why below in the comments section. And I really am wondering how you guys are going to see this division pan out because a couple of teams got better. And a couple of teams, I think, that made the playoffs last year aren't going to this year. And that's just how it goes in the NHL. Not everyone can stay at the top forever. So again, leave your comments and replies in the comment section below. I will definitely reply to them. And tomorrow, look forward to the Eastern Conference. We're going with the Metropolitan Division. I will see you then. And as always... Peace.